Hello and welcome everyone to this We Are The City webinar. We're going to cover today how to network like a pro. So if any of you have been in them situations where you've been in a large room of people that you don't know at all or know only in passing and you really want to make an impression on them, but the idea of going up to them and um, speaking to them puts you into a cold sweat, then this is the session for you. So in this session, we're going to cover a number of things, but let's start by just um, learning a little bit about uh, what we're going to cover in the session. And welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So in this session, we're going to cover why networking is essential to your career. How to build your brand. So what we're talking about in terms of your personal brand is what is it that you stand for? What is your character? What are your values? What's important to you? And how can you get the very essence of that over to people in a very short amount of words? And to do that, we're going to talk about an elevator pitch and what it is and how you can use one and a very specific formula that I use to actually build a very quick elevator pitch a pitch sorry that's very impactful um and then actually looking at what that means in terms of a, a virtual world as well and 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 how to make that impact if you're on a zoom or a webinar um so hopefully that's going to be useful for you today um if you uh, have got any questions um about things i'll talk to you about how we're going to use this zoom webinar but I'd love to hear from some of you about where you're from and um, uh, what your uh, what your thoughts are around networking. So if you've got any comments to make, use the chat function. So in the chat function, there's usually a little menu in it that says, you know, whether it's to the panelists or whether it's to everyone, there's a little drop down. So when you're doing the chat, ideally use the drop down to everyone, because what I want to do as much as possible is make this an interactive event. So as a star, I'd love you to just say hello, tell me where you're from, tell me a little bit about what you do, just so we hear a bit from the different people that are in the um, in the group here. So um, so please do that when you've got a moment. So while we're doing that and getting to know each other, um, let me tell you a little bit about the Zoom and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, your speaker. So. We're using the webinar function of Zoom, slightly different from your personal version, but works very, very similar. So what that means is you're going to be um, off camera and on mute as the default, um, just to help you to not have to be reminded to, to, um, uh, to go on mute. So that means that we're gonna use the chat function quite a lot as I pitch questions to you and ask for your, your thoughts back. So again, use that. And that's the little button at the, at the bottom that says chat and then make sure it's to everyone and then and then respond, uh, respond to things that way. Um, what we'll also have is as I'm going through things, there may be very specific Q and A's that you want to, um, uh, want to ask. And if you do, just use the, the Q and A function. So that's an additional button that you're going to see next to the chat. It has a double bubble to it. Um, and if you put your Q and A's to there, what happens is they come to me, the panel, it says the panel, but there's me. And then there's Ellie behind the scenes helping in We Are The City. And then what it helps us to do is, is get to them questions quickly and they don't get lost in all the chat. So if you have any questions as I'm going through the content, use that. And then as I pitch questions to you, if there's additional follow on things, use the Q&A. So chat for general updates and sharing, Q&A to actually help with the questions and then that'll help us to get to them quickly. We also have another function here and we'll use that if I later on I'm going to ask for some volunteers or some people to share some things and you can raise your hands to do that. So the raise hand function, um, if I am right and I'm I'm just thinking about it here. Yeah, is in you. It may be showing on your menu. So all of us have a slightly different version depending on our, our version. It may be showing next to um, chat and Q and A. If not, the very end of your menu, you've got a three dot one which says more, and in there there's a drop down, and it will say raise hand. 
so you can do it there raise hand now do that if you're ready to come on camera and chat and to share your thoughts and your experiences so again you won't need to worry about that until later but the raise hand will be our opportunity to talk directly and to share some of your reflections and ideas and then finally um we have i think it's, it's another point yeah if you haven't already got it i'm one of these people i'm a compulsive note taker so i've always got a pen and paper with me i've always got something i'm going to write with um but if you haven't if you have got something to hand a pen and paper that will be really useful because what i find with these sessions is they're more useful if you move to action quickly and, and some of the action we're going to do is some of the exercises where you write some things down so have a pen and paper available and um if you haven't got that just go and see if you can grab one now so you've got that because that will be helpful for some of the uh, some of the things we're going to do so that's mainly to get us prepared so i've gone through the outline i've gone through how we're going to use zoom today and what we're going to expect um again any questions about that just put them in the chat for now or any comments or again any shout outs or any hellos you want to make please do do them because i'd love to hear from you um and as i said i want this to be as interactive as possible so let's hear a little bit about me and who who you're hearing from today so this is me as a cheeky little urchin when i was uh, in primary school so I came from what I call humble beginnings. Um, you can probably hear from my accent, I'm from the Midlands area. I was originally brought up in Birmingham. Irish immigrant parents in a in rough inner city area of Birmingham. And um, we were fairly dysfunctional. It was a very chaotic background. My father was alcoholic. My mother was neurotic. I had an autistic sister. And, uh, you know, we just essentially just got by day to day there wasn't much expected of us there wasn't much um, in terms of support around for us and I was the youngest of four surviving children so I sort of crashed out of school crashed out of things without really any plan of what I was going to do but after job hopping for about a decade or so I did actually finally realize I did want to actually do things more seriously and I became a social worker and then eventually a CEO of an autism charity and started to think more seriously about my career and who I was and what I stood for and then what happened was I moved into a different world I, I realized that I had a number of passions one of them was people and the other one was change and they were the things I was really able to do an awful lot of in my social work and my uh, and my charity work and I, and I actually realized I wanted to do more of that so I moved into consulting so quite a big flip from one to the other um, but what that enabled me to do was work on big problems for global companies and um, so I've traveled around the world working with some of the household brands that you would all recognize working on their big problems and that has been great but what I realized was I saw firsthand that women were getting a rough deal in terms of the way that they were being um, supported by their organization or actually encouraged to actually do better or be promoted by their organization and I felt very uncomfortable that this uneven playing field was um, very visible to me especially from that sort of perspective of going from different companies and seeing different um, uh, different angles of things so over the last few years I focused on empowering female leaders and I do that through a range of coaching programs and uh, through group events through corporate programs and also through my latest book the female edge which you'll be hearing about uh, a little bit more so it's from them experiences from that insights from that ways of working that I've actually developed a whole way of helping women to be successful in their career authentically based on their goals and what they want to achieve so for today what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking about what are the issues for networking so if I asked you on a scale of one to 10, how good are you at networking? And just to be clear, if I put the scale as one being the lowest as in really, really don't like it at all. And 10 being I've got this, I'm superb, but I don't have a problem. What would you say your 
your level is. So I'd really love to hear from you. And on, on a scale of one to ten, what would you um, what would you say? I've got a three there, very good. Six, six, very good. Four, four, brilliant. Three, five, five. Yeah, five and six and sixes is not bad. I would describe a, a five. Oh, a seven here. Very good, Camilla. Camilla, Camelia. Sorry if I got your name wrong. Very good. Yeah, that's that's very good. Seven. Um. So. so you're going to be fine. I think you just need the odd, the odd bit to, to help you out. I would say if you're a five and above, you're doing quite well, really, because although you probably, it's probably more situational for you if it's around about five, as in if it's a place you know or people you know, you actually feel quite comfortable. But if, you, if, if, if it's not a place you know or it's not people you know, it's probably more of a struggle. That's what I find with people if it's five and below. Just wanted to check out with any of you, would that be a yes or a no? Would would that be what you would see as your experience there it'd just be lo lovely to hear that from you and um, thank you for sharing that's brilliant so just bear with me as I get my computer to acknowledge that I'm asking it to move on there we are so let's talk about what gets in the way so ah here we are Kelly thank you I find that I struggle as an intro, oh, intro really good co comment there and sometimes get lost in the crowd when I'm summoned by extroverts I think that there's a that there's a big difference here Kelly but what I would say is introverts can be as good at networking as extroverts I think where the challenge is though is you need to be be more prepared for what might come up so what we find is extroverts are better at thinking on their feet it doesn't mean their level of thinking is a better quality as an as a extrovert I am an extrovert um, but they're better at thinking on the feet but introverts tend to be um, better at responding to the um, to the situation in an accurate way so they won't change their mind over time because they haven't thought on the feet so the first thing that comes into their mind but it's better if you have a little bit of support and a bit of um, uh, rehearsal beforehand but I would say extroverts it's the same so we're going to use some techniques that will really help you as an introvert so thank you for sharing that so a couple of things I want to share with you, um, and I've got another one here. I'm comfortable with networking. It can be done face to face and in a less structured way. Yeah, very much less structured way sometimes really helps just getting into more of a conversation rather than feeling I'm calling it networking. Very good. Uh, virtual environment where the more casual moments are harder to come by. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge that I think that our Zoomified world has made things a bit more difficult in terms of what we miss now in terms of the more general networking is the times we would have had when we were in an office environment. So in an office environment, what would have happened is we would have got to a meeting and we maybe would have had a few minutes before the meeting. Somebody would have come in, I'd, we'd have got our coffee or our drink in hand. I might have a drink of my, a sip of my drink at some point during this. Um, and um, we've got a few months before the, before the meeting and they come in and we just start saying, oh, I'm so pleased I've caught you. I just wanted to ask you about da 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 or oh I thought that was great what you did the other day so these little off the cuff little conversations or side conversations that we would have had plenty of opportunity to have in the office environment um, are just not happening as much now and they're harder to create which is why I think the idea of having virtual coffees and making a quick you know 10 minute slot with somebody say hey I'd just love a quick check in with you and I'm um, trying to find them times is actually more um, more important than ever there are some technologies that have made this a bit easier in a networking event um, one of them I know that is very very good is Wonder Room where you actually create it as in virtual networking Zoom can do it but Zoom sort of assumes this main frame here or going into breakout rooms which we're not going to do today um, but Wonder Room's a little bit more free flowing with things like that but I, I agree with you I think that the virtual has stripped away some of our natural networking opportunities thank you very much for sharing that 
So I just want to talk about what's the impact of being a poor networker. This is a fellow author, um, Helen Appleby, and also a collaborator of mine. We work together on different things. And she wrote The Unwritten Rules of Women's Leadership. And what she says is, when you don't network, you're always trying to figure things out on your own. And when you're trying to do this without support, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be successful in your career. It just means that the journey is going to be tougher. And that is from her own experience. She became a global leader in one of the um, leading pharmaceuticals, worked in a dozen countries, had a, had a budget of well over a billion that she was managing. So, so she did get to the top of her level in the corporate environment. Um, but she said it, it was a tough journey. She made lots of mistakes on the way and hence she's written a book about it the unwritten rules and then you know uh, from from my experience and from what I talk about in in the female edge is networking opportunities do abound and you need to think about how you can make use of them and even in this virtual world there's still a lot there there's company events there's professional bodies and um, in some of your organizations you're going to have affinity groups there's going to be town halls I all be most of them virtual now and um, there's other places where there's going to be places to network. So the first thing is to start setting an intent that you're going to do more networking. And then the second thing is to start thinking about where are there opportunities out there that I could go to and start having my voice heard. And if you do not have the habit of picking up the phone and asking to meet somebody for a coffee, now is a great time to start. And even if it's a virtual coffee, you know, let's have a quick 10 or 15 minute catch up. I'd love to hear about what you're doing. I'd love to tell you about what I'm doing. Just start feeling comfortable with them type of conversations, which are not about a set agenda or a set meeting, um, because we're all craving them more just relaxed conversations. We don't always want it to be something where we're um, where we're having to have a, a formal meeting and, and talk about things in a formal way. So um, I think you'll find that people, even very senior people, are far more up for that than you might than you might think. So that's reasons why we need to do networking and think about it. So let's talk about what is the number one barrier to networking. What would you say that is? What are some of the things that come to mind in terms of the number one barrier that you feel in terms of networking? I'm going to have a sip of a drink. Confidence, definitely confidence, Kelly. yeah. Yeah, fears play a big part of this, Emma. I think you're right there. I think we do, we do find that there's a lot of fear that plays out um you know you know the fear of uh being good enough the fear of people taking us seriously um the fear of um uh people um rejecting us if we ask for help um finding the right networking group yeah i think that one's easy to overcome with time actually and again setting the intent i talk a lot about intention um fear that the person won't have the time or, or you might feel um, that they might feel obliged. Um, yeah, they might not have the time. What I say to that one though is, um, if they are willing to do it, they'll find the time. They might say, I'm busy now, but come back to me in you know, a month's time or something, go back to them. So the follow-up is crucial to networking and I'll talk about that later. Imposter syndrome, yeah, great one, Kelly. Um, that's a big one, imposter syndrome. Um, imposter syndrome is um, something that men and women have, but it's not equally distributed. So it's something that women particularly have. And there's lots of reasons for that. There's lots of reasons I talk about in, in my own book around it, around um, that feeling of, first of all, having to be a good girl. There's lots of conditioning of us about being good rather than being um, out there and goal setting and, and uh, competitive, which is more the boys, um, boys script when they're being, being conditioned in society. And a result of that good girl, it's about being perfect. And if we don't feel internally that we're perfect at something, we don't feel we deserve it and therefore we feel we're in posture and we shouldn't really be here so there's lots of that that plays out so a, a great comment there so they're all very much the um uh, the things that get in the way what i find is the number one barrier beside all that internal dialogue is actually just not knowing how to describe who you are what you do 
and um, what you want from others, having a clear ask of others. So it's that when you're put on the spot, you think, oh, what is it I want to say to this person? How do I describe things in a way that's coherent without going off on lots of tangents? And we sort of freeze. Um, and those of you who are in the introvert camp will really recognize that is being put on the spot and not being ready for it. There's a real freeze moment. And then not knowing what to say. And that embarrassment is the thing that we often fear the most. So therefore, we tend to avoid networking because we're not sure we can speak to people or, or say things in a clear way. Just want to know, does that resonate with any of you? as I move on. So let's talk about the three steps that make a great first impression. So it's knowing and owning what you're good at. And I really, really um, push women to own their brilliance. You all on this webinar are brilliant women. Whether you recognize it or not is irrelevant, but you are all brilliant and unique in your own right. And you have skills and abilities that nobody else has but you. Um, you've just described me. <laughs> um, then the second step is developing an elevator speech. And then the third one is knowing how and who to ask for help. That one's, that one's very important. Being really intentional about where you're going uh, networking, who you're hoping to meet there and what you're asking them for. So that's what we're going to go through. So hopefully that's going to be of interest. So we're going to, so this is where the pen and paper um, is going to be a useful for this first exercise. I want you to take a few moments to realise what you are good at. And there's a, a few places you can go to think about how do I know what I'm good at? Some of it you might already know and it might be top of mind and some of it might be things that you hear other people. So how do other people typically describe you? And if you think of friends, colleagues, and even recent performance reviews, what are some of the words, the key words and the key phrases that come up time and time again? I want you to really think about that and start capturing them. And then from there, just take a few moments to think about that and start writing them down. Is make a list of the powerful words and phrases that are, that are often used to describe you and your uniqueness and your abilities and your strengths. And they might be a whole range of things. It might be a uh, go-getter, it might be no-nonsense, it might be um, a high achiever, it might be um, the person that everyone looks to to get things done, um, it could be the person who lightens the, lightens the mood, could be all sorts of things. But just think about how you're described and then just take a few moments to write them down. And th this is going to be important because we're going to use these for the next stage. And you might be surprised if um, if, you, if you're going blank, is just just think about some of the um, some of the times when you're having a really good time either with colleagues think back to some of the times when we did have face-to-face -face conversations and there was a relaxed conversation and somebody shared something about how they seen you or even with your friends typically how they would how they would describe you because these are the nuggets of what makes you 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 know these are the ways often we don't see ourselves clearly through our own eyes but when we see ourselves through the lens of other people we start to understand what it is about us that people are reacting to what people love about us the reason that they feel attracted to work with us and spend time with us and they're the nuggets of understanding uh, uh, understanding you Okay, so anyone, if, if anyone's got any keywords they want to share, do. You don't have to, but if there's anything you just that has come up for you that you wanted to share, by all means do. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll just um, uh, share them. If not, I'm going to just go on to the next thing, which is, oh, brilliant, wonderful. So we've got here, and sorry because the line's so small, I can't see. It's Damla. Hello, Damla has said friendly, joyful, focused, organized, patient, passionate, creative, committed, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. 
Will the PowerPoint be shared? Yes. So what will happen is this will be made available afterwards. Ellie will come on at the end of the We Are um, the City team. Um, she'll come on and um, I'll be sharing it with her afterwards and she'll be making that available in the in the show notes. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, make sure that they are available. So absolutely there will be. Yeah. And thank you for, for sharing them wonderful words. So for networking, you need to have some way of describing who you are in a very pithy statement. So a, a short, concise statement that really gets who you are very quickly. The easy is to introduce yourself in words that are meaningful to you, but really get that across. The easier it is to go into conversations and, 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 and start introducing yourself to people that you don't know very well. Even to colleagues, this works very well. And the single biggest reason that people don't like um, networking is because they don't like that opening conversation, how to open the conversation and things like that. Or they struggle to answer the killer question, which is, so what do you do? Um, and of course, we know what we do. But beyond the job title of I'm whatever it is, I'm the finance manager or I'm the HR partner or, or um, wh whatever it might be. So what does it actually mean? You know, who am I behind that job title? So where do we get to to get to that essence of that behind that? So what you need is an elevator pitch. And an elevator pitch, the idea of it is that in, in the space of two or three floors of a lift ride, you could explain to somebody who you are, what you do, what you're like to work with, and what is it you need from them. So it's actually quite a small pitch. It's a bit like a sales pitch, but it's a pitch of who you are. And you've probably got some, actually, just checking with you. Have any of you developed an um, a, a elevator pitch in the past? I know at least one person on this webinar who probably has because we've worked together in the past. Um, but just out of interest, have any of you had to develop an elevator pitch in the past? Yes. OK, brilliant. So there's at least a couple of you that have. Brilliant. OK, so you might go back to the elevator pitch you've got and hone it. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, easier when lower down the ladder because it was more specific to the job. Yes, I think that we tend to see elevator pictures just an expansion of what we do in terms of our job. Um, for us to make an impression and for things to be impactful, I think we need to tell people who we are in relation to the role, not the role and what the role is about. Because what you're doing in networking is you're not trying to come in with a job description and say, look, here's a job description. That's me. I hope you remember the job. What you're trying to do is here's me. I happen to do this job, but this is the character of me and I want you to remember me. So, so that's what we're trying to connect with is much more the character of who we are. So a formula that I use for this, there's three elements to it. And you can see I've got the pen and paper there because I'll be wanting you to write things down. So the, an anecdote is um, the first part of it. And they don't need to be in this order, but these are the things to use. So an anecdote, share something about you. So this could be something from your power words or something from your childhood or something from your early career. Um, so an anecdote might be, um, I'm a um, PR specialist, but I fell into PR because what I really thought I was going to do was be a writer great anecdote or um, um, I knew I was going to be an engineer because I was the kid that took the uh, clocks apart when I was a kid that's an anecdote but you see all, all of these talks about something very personal as well so it doesn't need to be anything hugely life uh, revealing but it has to be something that actually gives some element of, of the individual and then there's the twist. So the twist is, how does this one characteristic or something that might usually be overlooked in you enhance your ability to do the work that you do? And that might be something like, um, although I started in um, marketing, what I actually found I was particularly good at was helping people solve problems. So I moved into um, 
leadership or I moved into HR. So uh, although I was good at this, I found I could use it better in this particular way because it gave me greater insight. And I'll give you some examples of that. So so how, how does that one nugget allow you to do something, a stretch into something different that wouldn't have been automatically put together? And you've all done that. In our career, we often move from one thing to another and we transfer skills. And sometimes because of the unique way we've got it, the way we transfer the skills is quite unique in terms of what we bring them. And then the particular area, which is your sweet spot. Now, the skill that you want to do in an elevator pitch is the one that you want people to remember you for, because that's the one that you want to promote your career or to or to then springboard your ask from so the sweet spot so what you already know you excel at um and um you'll look at how that is um something that you want them to um uh, to be aware of and it might already be some so if you are um the um the finance manager your sweet spot is clearly finance, but I think that the what you what you'll want to say about it is your sweet spot is I'm particularly good at financial analytics and solving problems where we have we, where we have issues with our accounts. That's the sweet spot. So it's not just the finance; it's a particular bit of it that you'll do. Three areas. Okay, so with them in mind, I want you and you've got your power words. I want you to take a few moments to grab your pen and paper. And to start to think about these three elements, I want to think about what's the anecdote I have about, you know, what was I like as a kid or what was I like in my early career and why that taught me that I was clearly going to be um, uh, using them skills in a different way as I got older. Um, what is the twist um, in terms of how I could, how I bring a, a new insight into things in the way that I do things? And then what's the what's the skill um, uh, in terms of what do I do now? What's my particular sweet spot? So think about the power words you've done. Think about them three elements. And I just want you to write down some some of the phrases, some of the words, and some of the things that are going to come to you around that. So take a few moments to do that. And while you're doing that, I'll start sharing some, but I'll just give you a few moments to get started, get your brain cells cogitating on that. And I'm just going to check on the time because I, I wanted to allow enough time at the end to, um, to take some questions. So while you're doing that, and if you've got any, any questions for me, let me know. So here's a few examples uh, from, uh, from people I've worked with in the past. So obviously, hi, my name is. <laughs> That's always good for networking. Um, I love solving problems. I was the kid that took the clock to pieces to see how it worked. I've already given you that example. That's a great anecdote. For the last 20 years, I've been an IT analyst. Um, sorting out and structuring data is what I'm really good at. So the skills in the middle here. But I was trained in solution architecture, so I'm str I'm a strong at the design end of things. So that's a twist because um, they are working as an analyst, which is in the detail, but they actually are also good at actually going into the design side. So normally analysts are seen in the detail, they're not seen as architecture. So that's a nice twist there. So they're giving people an idea of, yes, I'm doing this, but there's also this other capacity I've got. So this is the way that we'd start thinking about it. Another one I've got. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm the high energy bean in the corner. I love being busy. And when I'm not working, I'm competing in weightlifting championships. So that's an anecdote to just have a sense of who the character is. But my passion is HR, which is where I've worked for the last 10 years. Um, oh, I've got passion twice. Sorry about that. But my first passion was marketing. So I love putting the two together. So the twist here is I've done HR for 10 years, but I do marketing. So I work best when I'm under pressure and I relish delivering some of our large change projects. So that's the skill set there. And so they, the, the, um, um, the, the twist is that they've got two things they can pull together. Um, and then the skill is that they can use them in large change, because in large change, we're often talking about communications and selling the idea of change. And we've got to bring people on a journey. So that's why that one was particularly um, works well with that one. And then I've got another one for you here. And this is mine. And I'd, I would have actually changed this one based on what we've talked about today. But um, uh this is this is one of mine i have many hi i'm mary um growing up i wanted to make the world a better place uh, make people feel valued and special uh, because i didn't feel that way 
Um, my initial career in social work taught me compassion and my consulting career taught me about change. So I found a way to bring them two things together. And now I help women find career success on their own terms. So that's the um, uh, that, that, that's bringing the three things together. So I am just wondering, based on that, whether anyone um, has things that they either want to share in the chat or want to raise their hand and maybe share with us in the group, because that sometimes speaking them out loud helps us to hone and refine um, elevator speech. So I'd love to hear either in the chat if you've got a you've got a version you want to share or if you want to actually share it live, if you raise your hand and then Ellie can bring you into the room and we can actually just hear that from you. And um, and um, I can see if I can hone it for you any further. I'm going to have another sip of my drink. Any offers of sharing? I'm just going to check again. I've given you a little bit to do, and I know it takes time. And I don't want to move on too quickly, but I want to be respectful of your time. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So we've got one in the chat and I'm just checking. Ellie, I know you're in the background. I'm sure I, I can't see people raise hands. So you can let me know if there's anyone raise the hands. Can you, Ellie? None yet. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so um, I, now bear with me if I'm not saying your name correctly. My pronunciation will be Rain. Sorry if there's a different pronunciation there, you can help me with that. Um, I'm going to share yours because I think it's brilliant here. Thank you. Um, I always wanted to be an astronaut. Hi, I'm Rain or however we say that. I wanted to be an astronaut and I was dedicated and proactive enough to write and write to NASA at eight years old. Wow, brilliant anecdote. And um, I love exploring. So I went, so I spent a few years designing and building space instruments, but I'm also driven and great at solving difficult messes. Brilliant twist. Um, so I rapidly moved into leadership innovation and strategy. Now I provide strategic leadership and business enterprise to programs in the UK space sector. I think you've nailed it. I think that's brilliant. I really, really do. Yeah, very, very, very good. And because you've put the anecdote in, you've made it much more mem memorable. So somebody will remember it because they've got the little eight year old Wayne in their background <laughs> um, running around uh, writing to NASA. So I think that was brilliant. Thank you. Great. I hope the thumbs up was because I said your name correctly. But please, please forgive me if it's not correct. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you very much for sharing absolutely brilliant so what I'll do if anyone else wants to share do and if we've got time we'll look back but that was a great example of how to build it then three elements together and um, what you need to do before any networking event even on Zoom, but also face to face, is spend time saying it to yourself. So the best way to rehearse these things is obviously get them printed out in front of a mirror and say it to yourself enough times, usually between eight and ten. So it actually rolls off the tongue because you're obviously not going to say, oh, hello. And then you're going to have something written down. I'm the, and I'm, you're not going to do that. So it needs to come from the heart. You don't need to use exactly the same words in your event, it just needs to be the essence of it. So as long as you've got the essence of it, it will work. And a quick um, a quick tip from me in helping you to do it in a way that actually reduces your anxiety of memorizing it is when you're doing it in the mirror and you're in your, when you're um, saying it is if you tap the side of your hand as you're saying it to yourself, you're releasing some endorphins, which actually lower your stress and it will allow you to just feel a bit more peaceful as you're saying it to yourself and then if you're in the event you can very surreptitiously be having a finger on your hand or 
tapping your hand slightly as you're saying it to them and then saying releasing of endorphins and relaxedness will come to you so it doesn't feel like a stress as you're actually sharing your elevator speech just a very simple tip there right thank you very much for sharing um so we've done that so when you have someone's attention be when you've got the pitch to them i've put don't forget the pitch but what i mean there is don't forget the ask actually what is it you want to get from this networking event so when i say about being intentional about your networking event be intentional not only of where you go to but why are you going there what is it you most want to achieve from this event and these the type of people you may or may not meet from it so you usually will have something you want from them so it will either be an opportunity you may be looking for new clients if you're somebody that actually works for yourself or you may be just looking for intro introduction to new organizations that you want to work with through your through your role or you're looking for as a potential target to actually move into so really think about what is it I want from this and it might be I just want people to know me I just want people to know that I exist that's okay initially for networking if that's the initial one but I think you need to go a little bit beyond that so just challenge yourself to work out what that ask is if you know you're genuinely looking for a new role and new opportunities be really clear about that ask um, if you're looking for opportunities to extend your reach as a professional within your organization be clear about that especially if it's an internal networking event i'm looking for uh, for projects that might allow me to get involved with x or i'm hearing about this new sector that's been developed and i'd really like to get involved a segment the, i'd really like to get involved with that who do you think i need to speak to just be really clear and mindful about that but have that worked out before you go to the event even just thinking about it you know i i, I use pen and paper a lot that's why i'm encouraging you to and again another quick tip there is pen and paper is slightly better than typing on the screen because when we type in we're still in the left brain part of our thing of um very linear and just thinking about things in a certain way but what happens when we write different neural pathways light up and what it means is that we allow for um greater connections to be made to other things we can make innovative leaps because we're writing things down we're not exactly sure why that is but some of it is we have a bridge to our subconscious so as we're writing other things start clicking in so i would say always write down before okay i've booked on to the town hall or i've booked on to a professional bodies networking event what is it i most want to achieve from this event and then start writing and just see what comes out and then that allows you to anchor the intention so do that that will help you whether you're an extrovert or whether you're an introvert introverts it really helps you because once you understand that you can actually be much more um uh, fluid in your conversations with people in the event because you've done the thinking that you need to do beforehand that really helps you but extroverts it means that you can be really clear about what your ask is rather than saying the thing that's top of mind and then thinking actually that wasn't the most important thing for me so it helps both it helps both so i've said write write down what their masks are um when you've done that and you've got that pitch, you would add that to the elevator pitch. Let me see, I've just moved on a bit. So when you've done that wonderful pitch about, you know, uh, I'm the person who always did this, but these are my particular skills. I've married them with these skills, which means I'm particularly good at this. And I'm now looking for opportunities to do this or opportunities to move to this type of role, or I'm looking to work with clients in this particular space. Do you know of anyone? Could you advise me of people I need to speak to? So the ask is what you've told them about it. Do you know anyone? Could you advise me? Who do you think I should be speaking to be here who might know about this? So be really clear about doing that. And although that feels a bit like, oh, should I say that? People very, very rarely are offended about being asked for something. In fact, because of our human nature, we actually like being asked for our help because it's like, oh, 
you recognize some me as somebody who can help you oh I feel a little bit of a inner compliment about that and therefore I want to help you so we actually like being asked for help in the main as long as we're not overwhelmed and people are always asking but generally we do like it so don't assume it's something that will be taken badly in the main our human nature is we like being asked and we like therefore being able to lean in and give some help even if it's oh I'm not in that space at all but if you speak to such and such across the room they are definitely the person who can help you and they will guide you the other thing to do in an elevator pitch situation in networking is oh great you ask them who they are and what they do so you listen to their pitch and then say and then based on what they've said is is there anything I might be able to do to help you so think about the reciprocity of things in terms of I'm asking you for help. Is there anything I can do to help you? So remember that time to listen to them and see if there's anything you can do to help them. And that in itself is a great way to actually start to build relationships, get to know people and build your network. Um, I've got another, another comment here and it says pre-COVID, I have attended networking events with the intention of meeting my peers and expanding my network, but I have always struggled to maintain those relationships. Um, how can I maintain them? Brilliant, brilliant thing to ask. Thank you. That's almost as if you've set me up for my next slide. Thank you for that. <laughs> so I would say most importantly, once you've done that, once you've worked out your ask, you've asked for your ask, you've listened to them, you've worked that out, and then you followed through on your ask, is most importantly, it's follow up. And I always advise to follow up as soon after the event as possible. So ideally, if possible, the next day, but certainly within the week. If you leave it beyond a week, you know, life has already crowded you in with a thousand and one things. And it's like, what event? What happened? Who was I speaking to? So try and follow up as soon as possible. So the ways that you follow up is get the contact details of the person that you speak to so we're not in this world now where we can get business cards but any event that you're um, attending on zoom what I tend to do as a matter of course is I tend to um, cut and paste my uh, LinkedIn details into the chat um, and say contact me and connect with me and I ask for theirs excuse me and and in teams and zoom both of them have the option for you to chat to everyone or to an individual so if there's somebody there that you know you want to follow on the conversation with go out of your way to put the chat to them and say hey i'd love to connect this is my linkedin details can i have yours can we connect and then you can use linkedin or email as a way of directly getting it but get their contact details and most people are at a networking event because they want to give contact details so that should not be a hard ask um usually i i say linkedin is one of the best ways because you've got the chat function in linkedin then you can keep them um updated on things you're doing when you're doing posts and you can find that as a way of then um using uh, using opportunities to to create follow-ups um uh, with them and getting their email and, and setting up an, a, a conversation if you've got their email, thank them for the conversation. Remind them what the conversation is. Um, really enjoyed meeting you at this event. We talked about this, which was really interesting. Um, I'd, I'd love to uh, get your advice about how to and then whatever the ask is. So even if you ask them in person, ask them again in email or ask them again in, in the message. But remember to follow up. I think that's the single biggest thing that people forget to do in their networking, which is why they struggle with it and um, provide help for areas that they are looking for support in the can so remember what the things were that were important to them and even if it's not something that's your particular area if you know of somebody no matter how tenuous in your network who could be the person to help them go out of your way to join the dots say I can't help you with this but I know such and such who is do you want me to send a link to them um, especially if you can do it via email I always try and do email um, intros so be helpful go out of your way to find ways to, to join them dots with people and you'll be surprised at how wide your network is and if you don't know somebody directly you'll know somebody who will know somebody who can probably help them with that R. so go out of your way to help them with that as well and this anchors you in a relationship then that becomes much easier to go back three months time six months time and say hey we had a chat in such and such a time it was great to connect with you then I've got another question for you now um, but it's really helpful to do that if you do that earlier so yeah great a great thing to ask and a really important thing to do 
And um, yeah, I think that's it. So pause, <laughs> deep breath. Um, so that was it in terms of the main content for the webinar. But now I want to hand it over to you. We've got about 10 minutes and I want to hand it over to you for any questions you have. Um, thank you, Denise. Thank you very much. Um, what, what things are you still feeling that even after I think we've talked about now, you might struggle with in terms of your um, uh, your uh, networking or things, ideas or things that you'd like to hear a bit more about. So we've got a, a few moments. You can also raise your hand if you wanted to come on camera and, and, and chat about it. We can also do that. So so I'd just like to hear from you in the last few minutes. Anything else you'd like to um, like, like to hear about? I'm going to take another sip of tea. Now, we might wanted to move on too quick. A couple of final things then. And if any questions come, I'll address them. So I always say change doesn't happen through ideas. Change doesn't happen through um, uh, through theory. Uh, change doesn't happen through um, uh, through uh, it, it just sitting there and reflecting on things. It happens through what we do. So our steps and our actions are the only thing that change our world. That may be informed by all them previous things, but it's what we do. So make some concrete actions to support your networking today. So here's the things I want you to do. Some of which you've done, I want you to carry on doing. Identify your unique qualities by gathering the feedback, thinking about the feedback you get, but also maybe go out there and ask for a bit more feedback from people you respect, from people you love, from people you know who have your best interests at heart. And then hone that elevator speech. So what you've done so far, hone it a bit further, hone it a bit further so that the words really come out well. And I think the one that Rain shared with us was just brilliant. Probably for speaking it, you'd probably want to tighten the words, but actually the elements of it were just, just really good. Um, but 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 spend the time doing that and what you're asked is what is it you want people to think do or understand about you um, and that help you with as a result of uh, um, being introduced to you and practice it as I've suggested um, book some time with some friendly supporters to practice your, your pitch. So if you've got some uh, friendly colleagues or some friends who would understand your work and what you're doing, maybe spend a little bit of a Zoom time actually saying, look, I've been practicing this. Can I can I share it with you and see what you think? And then go forth and network. And I've got a couple of questions here I just want to acknowledge is, um, do you always need to follow up on email? Can it be? Oh, it can be LinkedIn as well. Callie. So whichever's the what is the giving you email, use email. Um, now, emails can get a bit lost, but the, the benefit of email is if you're introducing them to other people, you can see, see the other person saying, oh, you wanted to know about somebody who was focusing on um, joint ventures in the renewable energies field. Here's somebody I know. I'm introducing you to. I'll let you carry on the conversation. But you can also do that on LinkedIn as well. So either or it doesn't matter. Um, both of them are a great way. Um, how do I, I, I have, a, a, I, I use LinkedIn a lot to network. How do I affect it, a network effectively on LinkedIn? So there's a few things. Make sure your profile is up to date. So that thing that describes you, make sure it's more than your job description. So that's really important. Every time you update that and your photo, people get a little reminder. So I would suggest that your profile picture you need to update at least once a year maybe every um six months just a new picture of you fairly plain background um a slightly different look but just update that because that tells people and that description it should be at least once a year that you update is uh, what is it i am describing myself at that very top level so think about that the other thing is use the chat function to go back to your network and then every now and again go through them and think 
who are my connections how I haven't spoke to and then send them a message so so use that as a thing about hey we haven't spoken for a while how are you that might be enough or hey I'd love to do a chat for you why don't we do a quick virtual coffee so think about how you can lean into people and some of it might be simple hello and some of it might be um, um, going for a conversation but think about that as you've got a whole list of people there in your LinkedIn network so go out with your way to actively um, um, uh, lean into them when you can great question um, so just to um, let you know, um, a, a pitch from me now is these tips are from my book, The Female Age, which came out this year. So it's um, uh, it's on Amazon. So if you're looking for an inspirational gift for a friend or a colleague, it's available um, there. So um, so please do um, think about that if you're looking at, at um, gift ideas. And I'll just come back to the, that final um, comment in a moment. If you want to keep the conversation going, please do keep in touch with me these will be on the um on the slides that we'll share as well i'm available at my agents to change website mary agents to change i'm also available on linkedin as you'll have seen in the uh, we are the city and i'm also available on um twitter mary t mcguire so i'd love to keep the conversation go do reach out to me email me if you have any further questions and also um love to have you in my connection and then there's one file of comment and then i'm going to bring um uh, I'm going to bring uh, Ellie back in. So, um, Anna, thank you. Uh, thanks for the session. I think the universe was like a brilliant after my development conversation just this morning. Isn't that fabulous? I love it when that happens, Anna. Um, I think I, I, I need to connect someone just like you. Brilliant. I'll find you on LinkedIn. Do. Do, Anna. Do keep in touch. I'm wonderful when serendipity happens, when, you know, a whole series of events conspire. That warms my heart wonderfully. So please do. I'll look out for your email or your LinkedIn requests and I always answer them. So um, thank you all very much for your lunchtime today. I really appreciate it. Um, final uh, little um, plug is for the next session, which will be happening next week about how to build your personal brand. So it will be very much a build on what we've been talking about here from QB Springer um, and you can book that now on the We Are Virtual website so I'll just hand over to Ellie if there's any other final announcements um, and I'm wishing you all a great day thank you very much for your time I really enjoyed it perfect thank you so much Mary and thank you so much to everyone for joining it was a great session thank you yeah have a great day guys thank you all very have very much have a lovely much. rest of the day everyone